Hello ladies and gentlemen, Skirt before here bringing you in on the Minecraft World War 1 path to build tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the RMS Olympic. RMS Olympic was a British ocean liner in the lead ship of the White Star Line's trio of Olympic class liners. Unlike the airships in the class, the Olympic had a long career spanning 24 years from 1911 to 1935. This included service as a troop ship during the First World War, which gained her the nickname Old Reliable. She returned to service uh, in the civilian sector after the war, and served successfully as an ocean liner throughout the 1920s into the first half of the 1930s. Although increased competition and the slump in trade during the Great Depression after 1930 made her operation increasingly unprofitable. Olympic was the l largest ocean liner in the world for two periods during 1911 through 1913, interrupted only by the brief tenure of the slightly larger Titanic, which had the same dimensions but gr higher gross tonnage owing to a revisited interior configurations before uh, she was surpassed by the SS Imperator. Olympic also retained the title of the largest British built liner until RMS Queen Mary was launched in 1934. The Olympic was withdrawn from service and sold from scrap in 1935. Demolition was completed in 1937. So yeah, the Armistice Olympic here, a pretty interesting ship. Uh, our first ship of our type, basically a converted uh, civilian ocean liner into a troop ship or a uh, cargo ship. Uh, it was very common in World War One for these ships to be modif basically modified into um, war duty type of uh, ships. I mean, we saw it with plenty of ocean liners. Uh, for example, the Lusitania, which was sunk by German U-boats for uh, what they thought was carrying ammunition. I believe it actually turned out it was carrying uh, arms and ammunition, but uh, obviously the British and Americans denied that. Uh, however, basically, you know, we saw that kind of stuff happen. And these ocean liners were put into military action. A lot of them were sunk. A lot of them survived the war. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to see a civilian ocean liner turned into a troop ship. What we have in front of us here is the RMS Olympic in the World War One configuration. This includes the dazzle camouflage, uh, which is very common to put on these ships to kind of help distort their trajectory and make it harder to actually hit them uh, with, uh, you know, surface uh, ships. And uh, this is kind of around the 1917-1918 time frame, if you're wondering. Um, at least from my research and the cam I was able to find here. So pretty cool looking ship uh kind of weird to see a titanic type vessel here with this camouflage and looking the way it does but i really do like it i think it's super cool and will make a awesome addition to any of your world war one maps as a troop ship or logistical type vessel uh so pretty cool stuff um hopefully eventually i'll get around doing the titanic and hopefully the britannic uh titanic obviously being slightly different uh would obviously be in it, the way the Titanic looked when it sunk, and then also the Britannic, which was the hospital ship, which didn't include the armaments or anything like that. So, it would be cool to see both those um, hopefully done, but uh, overall, really cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of move into taking a look here at the ship and all that. Um, this is a really big ship. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't realize how big uh, Titanic was, and these ocean liners really, when you, know, you first look at them, but when you compare them to like these battleships here, like we have... Uh, uh, HMS Iron Duke right there, uh, King George there, it's pretty much bigger than all of my surface ships except it's kind of close in length with hood. But yeah, pretty impressive for an ocean liner, this thing is pretty dang uh, long. Uh, but basically, starting on the bow of the ship, obviously all the cabling, the mass, rigging, all that stuff. We have the bridge located right here along with several uh, cranes. Um, this ship had a crazy amount of cranes, I don't know if it was just with the uh, Olympic class in general or if it was just the ship in particular since it was a troop ship and transporting cargo and weapons and stuff with the troops definitely could have been uh, a lot more cranes installed for that purpose but there definitely are a lot especially in the bow section and stern we also have some five inch guns uh, if I remember correctly that are mounted on the deck level right here as we work way back we have obviously all the lifeboats here um, the kind of uh, you know detailing and superstructure here of the ship itself and as we continue to work our way back we just have again more of the detailing here on the top deck and all that stuff we get to the back section here we have obviously uh some you know more stuff going on here a lot more cranes uh and then we get to the very back here and we have a additional set of five inch guns here on the rear as well for uh some you know self-defense purposes for the ship overall really cool looking uh design i think and again gonna make an awesome addition to any of your world war one maps and just kind of a cool throwback to a uh pretty historically uh you know important ship and 
you know, all those ocean liners that were uh, converted into military service during World War I. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. All right, guys, go ahead and move into our first layer. We're going ahead and start with layer one. If you're completely new to my bath to build tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, at least for the first few layers, is I'd like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the center line of the whole of the ship, and then it'll be up to you guys to copy what we do on the right side over to the left side. It's pretty simple. We're probably going to only do this for the first three or two layers, as once we get to layer three, we have the camouflage that we have to deal with. Uh, so it'll be a lot easier um, just to get these first two layers out pretty quick. Now, before we go ahead and get started, the first thing to take into consideration is placing this in the water. I imagine most of you guys here are going to want to place this in the water, and um, we want to make sure that this is positioned correctly. So to make sure this is positioned correctly, this first layer, layer one here, is going to be basically one block underwater. As you can see here, this blue line here of concrete represents the water level and underneath it you can see we have this line that starts so very important obviously your ship will not sit properly in the water if it's a block off so again just make sure that's correct and good to go to begin with we're going to be placing down a long row of red concrete and this is going to go all the way down the center line of our ship and this in total is going to be 47 blocks in length so again from the front to the back 47 blocks we're going to go then go to the front block here and we're going to place down two brick top slabs coming off of it and then a acacia wood trapdoor like that there for the front. After that's done, go ahead and move in our way to the back. We're going to go ahead and place down a end rod. Coming off the end rod, we're going to place down a birch wood slab, a red concrete block, and then a brick on sound stair here on the very rear. And that right there is going to be the center line there of the ship. We're going to go ahead and now work our way out to the sides. Start off with the front here, we're going to go to our uh, second and third red terracotta blocks from the front. We're going to place down brick walls here on the side. And then going back from it, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Uh, red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick upside down stair. We're going to go then place down a brick top slab, which on the top slab, or on the side of it, we're going to go and place down a acacia wood sign. We're going to go then place down two brick uh, stairs like so. And we want to go and then place down a end rod and then a birch wood slab here on the end there. Our next row, going back up to the front, we're going to go and work our way out to the sides here. We're going to go to our fourth red concrete block back, so one, two, three, four. We're going to place down a brick top slab to the side here, followed by a second one back, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five brick up down stairs. We're going to go and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one. Red concrete blocks back. One, two, three, four. Brick upside down stairs. And we want to go and then place down two brick top slabs. So one, two, like that going back. After that's all done there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for our first layer one. Uh, actually, real quick, also on the back here on this red concrete block, we're going to place a nice snow button on both sides. Anyways, once that's done, that's going to do it there for layer one. As you can see, we should have something that looks like this here. And here's a top down view of what this should look like. That right there again is going to do it for layer one. Let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and take our brick walls. We're going to place down a brick wall on top of this acacia wood trapdoor. And we're going to then go back with another brick wall, followed by one, two, and three red concrete blocks back. And that's going to do it there for the bow. Moving to the stern, we're going to go ahead and place down a brick stair on top of this upside down one, followed by a red concrete block. On both sides of this red concrete block, we're going to place down a stone button. Coming off the red concrete block, we're going to place down an air brick upside down stair. A second stair coming off it like so. And then two red concrete blocks going forward. After that's done, going ahead and going off this red concrete block, we're going to place down a brick top slam, followed by a brick upside down stair. And then one, two, three, four red concrete blocks along the side. We're going to go and then take brick walls, place down one, two, and three brick walls along the side of those red concrete blocks. Take your red concrete, we're going to then go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Red concrete blocks back, or toward the front. We're going to go then place down two brick walls. On the inside here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4 red concrete blocks, and then two brick walls right here. And that right there is going to basically do it for layer 2, pretty simple layer. You can also go ahead and fill the inside in here of red concrete if you do want. It's not necessarily needed as it will be covered up, but if you do have water in here, I do recommend just kind of, you know, clean up the water and 
uh, all that stuff. But yeah, definitely would recommend filling this all in. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's the bare minimum you need, at least for the tutorial. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer two. Let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer three. Now, layer three, here's where we're going to start getting into the hole and with the hole, the camouflage pattern. Now, the camouflage pattern, we're going to build exactly as it is, as this is as close as I can get it at the scale to the actual real life camouflage. Um, so this is actually based off a exact replica of the camouflage that was on the Olympic. So we're going to be building it exactly as. Um, so this will take a little bit longer for these uh, first or these next two layers, especially as we do have the all-terrain blocks and stuff. So it's going to be a lot to explain. Um, but uh, once we get done with that, then it's you know not too bad after that. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to be going ahead and going to this brick wall here on the front here and we're going to start our work here on the starboard or the right side of the ship. We're going to place down a polished black stone wall here on this first block followed by a polished diorite block, a black concrete block and another polished diorite block and then we're going to place down another black concrete block after that. We're going to place down a diorite wall coming off this block here and then a polished black stone wall coming off this wall. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished diorite block back along with a black concrete block and a second black concrete block after that. Going to the sides of these black concrete blocks, we're going to place down two black stone walls out to the sides like so. We then want to place down a polished diorite block, black concrete, diorite, uh, black concrete, diorite, concrete, diorite, and concrete. So as you can see here we have an alternating pattern. We have four diorite blocks and we have four black concrete blocks. Along the side there. We're going to go then place down an additional two diorite blocks, a alternating pattern here. So we're going to do black concrete, diorite, black concrete, diorite, black concrete, diorite, black concrete, diorite, black concrete, and diorite. So from this point here, you can see we have one, two, three, four, and five black concrete blocks alternating with one, two, three, four, five diorite blocks. Once we get to this point, we're going to place down two black concrete blocks, followed by two blue concrete blocks, a diorite block, two black concrete blocks, a diorite block, two uh, blue concrete blocks, two diorite blocks, two black concrete blocks, two diorite blocks, and then a blue concrete block like that on the end here. We then want to place down a prismarine wall. On the inside of here, we're going to place down a blue concrete block. We're going to go and then place down a black concrete block coming off that block there, and then a polished black stone wall out to the side. We're going to go and then place down a polished diorite block, a diorite wall coming off of it, and then a blue concrete block going off of this diorite block like so. We're going to place down there a black concrete block going back, and then we want to go and then grab ourselves a polished black stone top slab and place it down next to the, coming off this black concrete block. On the inside here of the slab, we're going to place down a black concrete block here, followed by one and two more back, so you have a row of three. And we would then lastly on the back here, we want to go and place down a wither skeleton skull. And that's going to basically do it for our center line and our row to the right side. As you can see, uh, the alternating pattern here, I'll kind of give you guys an aerial view. So if you need to, you can take some time to pause and just make sure everything is lined up correctly. But this is what you want here for your camouflage for this layer on the right side. Uh, we also can go ahead and grab ourselves some black stone buttons. And on the sides here of these, this black concrete block, this blue concrete here, and then all the way along the side here, we're going to place down our black stone buttons like so. And this right here is just going to kind of create the portholes on the side of the ship. And also we're going to go all the way up to this Polish diorite block here. And we're going to stop at that point right there on the ship. And that right there is going to be our right side. Moving to our left side. So for our left side here, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going to this diorite block. We're going to place down two prismarine walls back from it. We're going to go then place down a blue concrete block, a polished diorite block, and then a narrow blue concrete block. Coming off the polished diorite, we're going to place down a diorite wall and then a prismarine wall like that to the side. Going back from the prismarine wall, we're going to place down two blue concrete blocks, a diorite block, blue concrete, black concrete, diorite, and then blue concrete. We're going to go then take our diorite blocks. We're going to go, ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then a black concrete block, two diorite blocks, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six black concrete blocks, two diorite blocks, a black concrete block, one, two, three, four diorite blocks, two black concrete, a diorite block, 
two black concrete, a direct block, and then two direct walls going back, and then a black stone wall like that. On the inside here of the direct walls, we're going to place down two direct blocks, and then a black concrete block right here. We're going to place down an air polished direct block, and then an air black concrete block, and this time a polished direct top slab. And that right there is going to basically do it for the right side. So take a look at it from here. A little bit of an aerial view here. You can kind of see how the right side or the left side, sorry, compares to the right side. And uh, that's pretty much that. So pretty simple. And just like we did for the air side here, we're going to do our buttons. So we're going to start with this blue concrete block. Place a button on the side here and all the way along the side here. So all the way back. And we're going to go ahead and stop at this direct block. So that's going to be our last one we're going to place a button on. And once you have that all complete, that is going to do it there for layer number three. Um, as you can see, this is what it should look like from up above for this layer. And with that, that will complete it. You can choose to fill this in with uh, diorite or spruce, whatever you guys want to fill that in with. doesn't really matter. Again, none, nothing is visible on the inside here from this layer. Anyways, that right there is going to be it. Let's move on to layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to get, begin with, we're going to go and place down a direct wall on top of this one here. In the front, we're going to then place down a black concrete block back, a polished direct block, and then a, another polished direct block after that, like so. Once we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and then start work on our right side here. We're going to place down a uh, direct wall, come off the side of this block here, followed by a polished black stone wall, like so. And then going back from the polished black stone, we're going to place down one and two black concrete blocks, followed by a polished direct block. Coming off the side of the polished direct, we're going to place down a direct wall, a black concrete block also back from this, uh, this uh, direct block, and then we're going to place down a polished black stone wall coming off the side of it. We then want to go ahead and grab our polished anisite blocks. We're going to place down, or sorry, polished direct. We're going to place down two blocks, black concrete, polished direct, black concrete, polished direct, black concrete, and polished direct. If you notice a pattern here, basically in between the direct blocks here, we're going to go ahead and place down black concrete on top, and basically above the black concrete here, we're going to place down direct. So we're kind of offsetting what we did on the previous layer. We're going to go and then go to this section here, two black concrete blocks, polished direct, black concrete, 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 and then polished direct. So again, that alternating pattern there going across. Once we get to this point, we're going to take our black concrete, we're going to do a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 black concrete blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down two direct blocks, followed by two blue concrete blocks, and then one, two direct uh, blocks, a blue concrete block, and then another direct block here on the end. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a direct stair. We're going to place down a direct upside down stair like so, and then a direct top slab coming off the side of the stair. On the inside here of the top slab, we're going to place down a direct full block, and then we're going to place down a second full block going back, followed by a polished direct top slab, and then we want to place down a iron trap door here coming off that top slab. On the side here of the top slab, we're going to place down a black concrete block, and then a polished black stone top slab going back from it, and then a iron trap door here on the very end, like so. And that right there is going to basically do it for our right side. So again, just like we did before, I'll give you guys a little bit of an above view. So this is this is what it should look like for this layer. And like we did before on the previous layer, we're going to go and take our dark, or sorry, polished black stone buttons. We're going to start at this full block here, place down a button, and all the way along the side here of the ship. So just like this. And we're going to go ahead and place it down on these two black concrete blocks right there. And once we have that done, we have the right side of the ship complete for right now. Once that's done, we're going to now move our way over to the left side. So starting again at our bow of our ship, we're going to place down a direct wall, which is going to be coming off this block here. A second direct wall back, a blue concrete block, and then one, two, three, direct full blocks. We're going to place down a uh, prismarine wall on the side here of the third, the, or the middle block, so the second block here, and then a direct wall after it. We're going to then place down two direct blocks, blue concrete, a direct block, blue concrete, and then black concrete, followed by a polished direct block, blue concrete, then one, two, three, four, uh, direct blocks, 
two black concrete, two diorite blocks, two black concrete, two diorite blocks, and then we're going to do a row of one, two, three, four, five black concrete blocks, two diorite blocks, black concrete block, one, two, three, four polished uh, diorite blocks, two black concrete blocks, one diorite block, two black concrete blocks, and also one, two, three uh, diorite blocks, and then a black concrete block here in the end. We're going to go then grab a quartz, or sorry, a diorite stair, place down a diorite upside down stair here, and we also want to go and grab ourselves a polished blackstone top slab, we're going to place it there next to the stair. We're going to place down a black concrete block here on the inside here of that slab, and then coming off of it we're going to place down a polished diorite full block, like so, with a polished diorite top slab, and then a iron trap door coming off like that for the rear there. Just like we did before, we're going to take our dark oak, or sorry not dark oak, we had our polished blackstone buttons placed on the side here, and also the entire side of the ship here. So just like this, work our way all the way up to the front. And once we have that done, we're also going to place it down on these two blocks up here in the front as well. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and also a crossbow. We're going to go ahead and go to this diorite wall right here. We're going to place an iron, a, uh, item frame, a crossbow in the item frame, item frame and rotate so it's facing downwards. Same thing over here like that to go ahead and make the anchors on both sides of the ship. And with that all done, uh, let me give you guys an overview over here of the right side. I did forget to do that, or sorry, the left side. I did forget to do that. So this is what it looks like and kind of get an overview of what this looks like. Now, also for this layer, I do recommend completely filling this in with spruce wood. Now, not all of this is going to be visible. Uh, you will have this front section here, which the top deck will be visible. And also on the back here, you will have this deck section as well. Uh, so I do recommend just filling it in completely. Um, you don't really need to, but again, it's recommended and I'll just use World Edit there to quickly fill it in, but uh, this is what this layer should look like when this is all complete. Anyways, that right there again is going to do it for layer uh, number four, and with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer five. Layer five here is probably going to be our longest layer. We do actually have a lot to do uh, for this layer, but uh, once we get this layer done, it's going to be, you know, basically getting easier from there on out. So, Let's go ahead and dive into it. To start off with, we're going to place down a iron bar, not an iron bar, sorry, an end rod on top of this. Actually, look at the completely wrong layer. Uh, we're going to be going and placing down a polished blackstone wall. We're going to go ahead and go back with it with a polished diorite full block. And then we want to go ahead and then grab our spruce wood. And we're going to be going ahead and placing down two spruce wood planks back like that down the center. Now, over here on the right side, we're going to place down a blackstone upside down stair. And then a polished diorite upside down stair, like so. Over here on the left side, however, we're going to go and grab warp stairs. We're going to place down a warp upside down stair here, and then a warp upside down stair come off of it, like so. So you have something that looks like that here for both sides there, and we have the contrast in colors. We then want to go ahead and grab our skeleton skulls on both sides of this uh, diorite block. We're going to place down a skeleton skull, like so. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some spruce wood slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three the spruce wood slabs across with a birch wood sign to both sides. After that's complete, we're going to then place down a diorite wall, or sorry, a spruce wood slab here in the center, and then a diorite wall to both sides. We then want to go ahead and place down a polished diorite full block here in the center, and we're going to then grab a skeleton skull, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull on these blocks here to both sides, followed by a polished diorite full block on top of those walls. Now coming off that uh, full block, we're going to go and place down an end rod that faces toward the front here. And this is going to be, I believe these are actually 5 inch guns, and I think the guns on the side here are 7 inch. Or something of that sort. I can't remember the exact armament for it, but something of that sort. Um, but yeah, so we have some guns that are mounted here on the front of the ship. After that, we're going to go and then place down a direct wall coming off this block here. A spruce slab to both sides, and then we're going to place down a uh, direct slab to the left side, and then a polished blackstone slab to the right side. On the side of the direct slab, we're going to place down a birchwood sign, and then we're going to place down a dark oakwood sign on the side of the right side slab, so like that. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a daylight detector. We're going to place it on the spruce plank here. We're going to then place down an end rod back, and then an air daylight detector like so. For our guns to the sides here, we're going to go ahead and go to this uh, block right here. We're going to place down a Anvil to both sides, and then rod coming off of it, and then wither skeleton skull coming off the back of the anvil, like that, and same thing here to both sides, like that for our uh, main battery uh, for the front. 
We then also want to go and grab spruce wood pressure plates. We're going to place our pressure plate on top of this block here to both sides and also on top of these two blocks here. We get to the section here, we're going to place down a polished tyrite top slab there in the center. We're going to then place down an end rod coming off of it to both sides here like so. And we want to go and then grab ourselves a grindstone and we want to place down a grindstone upside down like so. And this is going to be a pair of cranes that are located up here in the front of the ship. So just like that. Now once we get to this point, we're going to start doing each side individually. Um, and real quick before we do that, we can actually do this section here. So for this, we're just going to place down a row of three of polished diorite blocks across and then a polished diorite upside down stair to both sides like that. Now uh, from this point here, we're going to start working on each side individually. So we're going to need for this stairs as this whole line that runs along the side here is made up of stairs. We're going to be using polished diorite, blackstone, and warp stairs. So for this, we're going to be going ahead and starting off with our first stair here. We're going to go back from it with a blackstone uh, stair. And I'm just going to say the color of the stair. Um, I don't think I need to say that it's a stair, as I've kind of already explained that there are going to be stairs all the way along the side here. But make sure you just have quartz, blackstone, and warp stairs to go along the side here. We're going to go ahead and place down a diorite one, blackstone, two diorite, followed by two blackstone. We're going to go ahead and place down a diorite a blackstone, a diorite, a blackstone, diorite, blackstone, diorite, and blackstone. We're going to go ahead and place down two diorite back, followed by two warp stairs, diorite, two black concrete, or two uh, blackstone, a diorite, two warped, diorite, and a warp stair like that followed by an additional warp stair and polished diorite stair. And then we're going to place down a slab here on the ends. Now, that was a lot. Uh, we have a lot of those stairs there, and now to even make this even better, we have to go back and add on to it. So, real easy for this section here, wherever we have our stairs. And again, I'll give you guys a little bit of an overview here of what we just did, so that you can look at it for reference if you did fall behind. But this is what it should look like. We're going to go then take signs. And on every one of these diorite stairs, we're going to go and place down a birch wood sign. And this is going to be for every stair along the side here. So a lot of work. Uh, so this is going to go all the way down the side here for each stair. And include our last stair right there. Now, once we have that done, we want to go and then take our warp signs. And we're going to place it down on every warp stair. So we don't have as many of those should just be those two those three sets of two and then we're gonna take our dark oak with signs and place it down on the blackstone stairs so all the way along the side here like so and this right here is what makes the layer the longest and once we have that done we have those signs set now you think you're done but we do have a little bit more to go we're gonna go and start off by going ahead and go into this third stair back we're gonna take item frames and run it all the way along the side here now, one thing I should mention is that some of you guys will not be able to do this. Uh, some versions of Minecraft do not allow the placement of these item frames uh, with the signs. If that's the case, then I recommend just going ahead and doing the signs. Um, the black beds are a nice extra detail, but I would recommend just doing the signs if you cannot do the item frame technique. Uh, once we have this done, we can then go ahead and go to each one of these item frames. And also, we stop here the second to last stair from the end. And we're going to place down back black beds in each of these item frames. And this represents kind of those more... Uh, rectangular uh, windows that were located here that kind of ran, ran alongside the deck here. Not sure why. Seems like there's uh, some item frames that got put into some of these. But yeah, we're just going to go and place this all the way down the side here in each one of these item frames. And looks like I kind of placed a little bit too many in some, so that kind of sucks. But we just want to make sure that each one gets a bed. And just like that. And we have that design that runs along the side there. Really nice design there for the windows. I think it looks really nice on the side of the ship. Anyways, that's the right side. Now moving on to the left side. Left side here, we're going to be doing the same thing for stairs. Um, except a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and go from the stair here. We're going to place down a stair back from it. Followed by a second stair. We want to then place down a warp stair. A diorite stair. We're really going to place down a blackstone stair. A diorite stair. Blackstone. Two diorite stairs. 
black stone, and then one, two, three, diorite stairs. We're going to then place down two black stone stairs, two diorite stairs, a black stone stair, one, two, three, diorite stairs, black stone, followed by a diorite stair, a second, third, and fourth, so row four there, four black stone stairs, and then a diorite stair, followed by a diorite slab. And that right there is going to do it there for the side. Just like we did before, we're going to place down our signs here. So birch wood for the diorite stairs, and we're going to be using uh, dark oak wood for the uh, blackstone stairs, and then obviously warped wood for the warped stairs. So this is going to go all the way along the side here of the ship, just like we did before. And almost done with our birch wood and our dark oak wood signs. And then just like we did before, item frames, we're going to start the third stair back. One, two, three. This is just going to go along the side here. And we're going to stop at our second to last stair right here. Then going back, just place our beds back in those item frames to make those windows. And with that all done, that's going to do it there for the right side, and this is what it should, or side of the left side, and that's what it should look like. With that all complete, we're going to now move to the rear of the ship. So at this point right here, we want to go and then go between these stairs here. We're going to place down a diorite slab here to both sides, and we can go and close off the back here with a row of three of diorite full blocks. We're going to go then place down a diorite full block here in the center, and then a diorite slab here to both sides, and a diorite block there in the very center. We're going to place down one more additional diorite block that comes out, followed by a second one. So you have two that stick out like so. We're going to go and then grab our grindstones. We're going to place down a grindstone, which is going to go right here. And over here we're going to do the same thing. So a grindstone, like so. It's going to come down like that. Once uh, we have that done, we want to go and then grab a end rod. We're going to place down an end rod, come off these two grindstones, and then a skeleton skull come off the tips and the end rods, like so. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some spruce pressure plates, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five spruce pressure plates, and over here one, two, three, four, and five. The center space here, we're going to take our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a daylight detector here, followed by an end rod, and then there daylight detector in this spot right here. We then want to place down a polished diorite stair to both sides here, and then a row of three of diorite walls across in between those stairs. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then focus our attention over here to the right side of the ship. We're going to go do a black concrete block, followed by a polished diorite full block. We want to then grab our diorite walls. We're going to go and go two diorite walls back, two polished diorite full blocks on the inside there of those walls, an air block back, and then a diorite wall here on the end, and then a polished diorite block here in the center. We're going to go ahead and do over here on, or we're going to go ahead and go to the left side, and then for the left side here, we're going to place on a black concrete block a polished diorite block. We're going to go then grab a polished black stone wall, place it down here, followed by a polished diorite full block behind it. Come off the wall here, we're going to place down a diorite wall, like so. Then a polished diorite block, a another black concrete block, and a another polished black stone wall, just like that. And after that's done, we just want to go and then grab ourselves black stone buttons, place down two here, one here, and over here, button here, and then two like that. And with that all complete, we then just want to go in very simply, take our spruce planks and fill the space in, like so, with spruce planks, like so. And that right there is going to complete that, and also the very last thing for us to do to finish this layer off is to place down a birch sign on both sides of this diorite stair. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for this layer. Actually, also, there's going to be a polished black stone button on the very end there, like that. Anyways, that right there is now it for uh, this layer. This layer here is our longest one by far. Uh, one thing I also recommend doing is going to the inside here, and I recommend filling this layer in with spruce wood planks as well. Uh, again, some of this will be visible for our top deck portion. So I recommend just completely filling this in um, like so. And with that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer 5, and that's going to be our longest layer here for the tutorial by far. 
And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number six. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six, to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna place down an end rod here on the very front here. We're gonna then place down a spruce wood pressure plate back, followed by another end rod. After we have that done, going up from this end rod, we're gonna go ahead and place down a skeleton skull. Going back from the, the skeleton skull, we're gonna place down another end rod, followed by another skeleton skull, and then we're gonna go ahead and place down a chain that comes down from it for a forward crane here on uh, the ship. After that's done, we want to go and then grab ourselves a daylight detector. We're going to place it down on top of these two uh, polished direct blocks. And we're going to go and then place down a uh, item frame that's going to go on top of these two blocks here. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black, polished black stone button, like so. And we also want to go and go back from those with a piece of redstone dust on these two stairs, like so. On the back here, on this block here, we're going to place down a polished direct, or a polished blackstone button and then a item frame on top of it as well with that done uh, we want to go then also place down a end rod which is going to go ahead and go on top of this uh, wall right here after that moving back to our cranes we're going to place down a skeleton skull which is going to go on top of the uh actually real quick before we do if you do have access to world edit we're going to be going ahead and using a world edit uh, design here which is going to be using a lever here and we're going to place this down on both blocks like so now, if you have access to a debug stick, you can use this design to kind of glitch, um, basically, basically kind of glitch the game to do a cool technique where it puts the end rod on the actual uh, lever, it's, or on the end rod itself. And to do this, we're just going to use a debug stick, and we're going to do it to this setting, and we're going to just uh, right click, and it creates that design there for those levers. Works really good for these cranes, definitely recommend it if you do have access to it, uh, and then skeleton skulls on those two grindstones. I know not every version has access to it, and if you don't have access to it, then you'll just have to go without the levers. Uh, once we get to this point, we're gonna then take our stairs, we're gonna place down a row of three of polished diary to upside down stairs across the front here. We're gonna place down item frames across the front, and in those item frames, we're gonna place down a row of three of black beds. On the center stair, uh, we're gonna place down a birchwood sign, and if you are a different version of this game, please uh, just go ahead and use a row three of item frames. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down a iron trap door to both sides here. And then we're going to place down an item frame if we can, coming off the side here of this uh, item frame. We then want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, coming off the side here of this iron trap door to both sides like so. Now once we get to this section here, we start to experience again where some of the sides are different from each other. So I do apologize if I have to take some looks back and forth here, I just want to make sure I get everything completely right. Uh, but we do have some differences that are going to start popping up here. Uh, to begin with, we're going to place down a polished direct block in the center, followed by 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th ninth block back. So just a row 9 there going back. Working on the right side to begin with, we're going to place down a black stone wall followed by a direct wall, a black stone wall, and then one, two, three direct walls, a polished uh, direct block, and then a black concrete block, and then another polished black stone wall like that. That's going to be on the right side here. Over here to the left side, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five direct walls, a black stone wall, a direct block, a black concrete block, and we're gonna go ahead and then place down a grindstone in this section here. So there's gonna be a grindstone coming off this block. So you can see there's a bit of a difference there on both sides. Go ahead and take the time, make sure that you are correct on both sides. Anyways, once we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and then grab an end rod. We're gonna place down an end rod on top of these two stairs here. We're gonna then place down a smooth quartz slab coming off the end rod. We're gonna go ahead and then take our um, our birch with fence gates, we're going to place down a fence gate here in between them and have them opened up toward the sides. Fall by a smooth quartz slab again to both sides. Same thing here for our fence gates. A smooth quartz slab to both sides. And we're going to do the same thing again, birch with fence gate out to both sides like that opened up. Smooth quartz slab. And then right here we're going to place down an end rod like so to both sides. Now across the tops of the end rods, the quartz stairs and the uh, fence gates, we're going to take string and just place down a line of string across the top here. And this is going to create a kind of a somewhat cable-like line there. If you get real close, you can kind of see the detail for it. 
and same thing over here as well. So it's not a super noticeable feature, but uh, just a you know, little bit of extra detail uh, for this design. And that right there is going to be our front section there and our lifeboat section. We also want to go and grab item frames and uh, black beds. So item frame here and a black bed. We're going to place down the item frame here on the side of this diorite block here. Which we may need to delete the string for. And then we're just going to place down a black bed in it. And then a string on top here. And same thing over here for this section. Like so. So that right there is going to do it for the front section. Go ahead and continue to work way back. We're going to take our black concrete. We're going to place down two black concrete blocks here. On the right side, we're just going to place down two black stone walls going back. And over here on the right side, it's going to, or sorry, left side, it's going to be a direct wall and a black stone wall. We're going to then place down a direct block here in the center, followed by a direct slab to the left side. And then we're going to place down a black stone slab, which we'll go ahead and grab. And this will be going on the right side, just like that. We will then place down a black stone wall on the right side here, followed by a direct slab in the center, and we're going to then place down a direct wall on the other side. We're going to then place down a direct slab on this side, or actually sorry, a black stone slab on the right side here. We're going to then place down a cobweb in the center, and then a polished direct slab to the right side, or the left side. We're going to then place down another black stone wall, which is going to be on the right side here, a diorite slab there in the center, and then a diorite wall to the right side, or the left side. We're going to place down a polished uh, diorite block there, followed by a diorite slab to the right side, and then to the left side a black stone slab. We're going to place down two black concrete blocks down the center here. On the left side, a black stone wall, the right side a diorite wall. And then on both sides here, we're going to go and place down a redstone repeater. Going back like so. And then come off the side of the redstone repeater, we're going to place down a spruce wood trapdoor like that to both sides. Once we have that done, we're going to go and grab ourselves some spruce pressure plates. And we're just going to place down a line of spruce pressure plates going all the way up between that slab there and the end rod. So just like that for the top decking. After that, we're going to go then place down a iron trapdoor, which is going to come off of this black concrete block here. We want to go and then place down two direct blocks in the center. On the left side here, we're going to place down a direct block, followed by a black stone wall. And then over here on the right side, we're going to grab a prismarine wall. And there's going to be a prismarine wall, and then a black stone wall over here on the right side. Coming off the second wall here, we're going to place down a spruce wood trap door. Again, to both sides like so, and then two spruce pressure plates in between them like so. When we get to this point here, uh, we're going to then grab ourselves some redstone repeaters again, and daylight daylight detectors. We're going to place on two daylight detectors, turn those to night mode, and we're going to then place down a redstone repeater like so on both sides. Going back from this, we're going to place down a polished diorite block in the center here, a diorite slab to the right side, and a diorite slab to the left side. We're going to then place down two direct blocks down the center here. Over here on the left side, we're going to go ahead and be placing down a uh, direct stair, then a blackstone stair. And over here on the right side, we're going to go ahead and grab two warp stairs and place down two warp stairs like that along the side. On the very back here, we're going to place down a direct full block, followed by a direct slab to both sides of the full block. And um, actually, to the sides there, we're actually going to have blackstone. To the left side, or actually, yeah, black stone to the left side, sorry. And then this row right here, we're going to have a diorite slab in the center, warp slab to the right side, and a black stone slab to the left side. And we're going to then grab ourselves blue concrete. We're going to place down a blue concrete block here, and then a polished diorite block like that down the center. Now, once we get to this point here, we're going to then work our way out to the sides here. Um, so we're going to grab ourselves cord slabs, fence gates, uh, the strings, and also the end rods. And we're going to basically do the same lifeboat structure we did for the front. So, end rod here, uh, slab, fence gate open up to the side, slab, fence gate to the side, slab, fence gate to the side, and a slab that ends right on top of that direct uh, upside down stair. Same thing over here. Just like this. 
And just like we did before, we're gonna go and take our string and run across the top here of those fence gates, slabs, and end rods. Once we get back to this point here, we wanna go and then place down a upside down grindstone, which is gonna be on this section here. So just like that. And this is gonna be the same thing over here to this side as well. So just like that. And once we get to that point also, this slab right here, we'll actually go ahead and swap out for a direct wall. So uh, we'll go and change that out on both sides there for those cranes um, to make that actually look a little bit better. Uh, but anyways, once we get to this point here, uh, we're also gonna go and grab brown carpet and some spruce wood pressure plates. We're gonna place nice spruce wood, or sorry, just brown carpet in between those sections here and then brown carpet like that. So two brown carpets in those sections there and then a spruce pressure plate on top of this block right there. Now, after that, we're going to then place down a uh, place or block. So just a block that we can delete later. We're going to use um, some yellow concrete as it stands out. We're going to do the same technique we did with the front uh, this with our levers. So we're going to go and grab ourselves a debug stick again. And we're just going to do the same technique. So uh, just like we did for the front there, we're going to select it so it drops down like so. Same thing on both sides like that. And then we're going to place down our skeleton skulls on top of those uh, grindstones like so. After that we're going to go and place down another direct wall on top of this block right there. Going ahead and moving back to actually sorry also coming off these grindstones here uh, we're going to go and place down a end rod coming off both those and then a skeleton skull coming off those end rods. Now for the back section here uh, we're going to go and grab our grindstones and we're going to place down a grindstone which is going to be upside down on top of the stairs here. So like that and same thing over here like so. And we're going to then place down a end rod going in between them. And then a diorite slab in the very center between them like that. Now in the back here we just have a lot of detailing here for the top section of this deck and also the next set of our guns. So for these super simple uh, what we want to do here is we're going to place down a redstone repeater here in the center. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull back from the redstone repeater. On top of this block here, on both sides, we're gonna place down an anvil. Coming off the anvil to this side, we're gonna place down an end rod, and then a wither skeleton skull on the opposite side, like so. And same thing over here, like so. And we wanna go then place down pressure plates on these two blocks, like that. Uh, once we have that done, we're gonna place down another redstone repeater here in the center. A skeleton skull to both sides, like that. And we're gonna then grab our quartz for our diorite stairs and slabs, and also some birchwood signs. We're gonna place down a upside down stair here to both sides. And then going ahead and going off those stairs, we're gonna go and place down a row of three of diorite top slabs across in between them. And on the sides of the stairs here, we're gonna place down birchwood signs. And that's gonna be on the two sides here of those stairs like so. And we wanna go and then grab our repeater. We're gonna place down a redstone repeater like this in between, around the middle block, and then a skeleton skull on both sides like so and then lastly on the back here we're gonna place down an end rod and then go up from the end rod and back one for the uh, rear mast and uh, after that's all complete there that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number six for the build again a very long layer but that's going to be our last long layer there and it's going to be kind of smooth sailing from here on out anyways that right there is it for layer six let's go ahead and move on to layer seven all right guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna go and take our iron trap doors, uh, which we'll go and grab, and we're gonna place our row three across the upside down stairs there for the front for the bridge. We're gonna go and then place our redstone repeater like this back from it with the notches spread apart, and then a skeleton skull on top of these two walls, like so to both sides. We wanna go and then go back from the skeleton skulls with two smooth quartz slabs to both sides like that. And then in the center space here, we're gonna place down a polished diorite block, followed by a black concrete block like that in between those slabs. We then want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on top of these two walls here and then a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart in between them. Coming off the repeater we're going to place down one and two and rods going back which is going to connect to two daylight detectors and we're going to turn these daylight detectors to the night mode with spruce wood pressure plates on the full blocks on both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a redstone comparator here on top of that block followed by a polished diorite block, black concrete, and then a spruce pressure plate like so. On top of this cobweb, we're gonna place down a skeleton skull. And then going back to this block here, we're gonna place down a spruce pressure plate. We're gonna place down a black concrete block, 
followed by a blue concrete block. And we then want to go and place down a stone button, which is going to go on top of this iron trap door. After that, we're going to place down a daylight detector here, followed by a second one. We're going to turn these to night mode. And on both sides here of those, we're going to take skeleton skulls and we're going to place down uh, two skeleton skulls here on the top of those walls, like that. We then want to go ahead and go back to this block here. We're going to place down a red star repeater with our notches spread apart, a polished iron block, a blue concrete block, and then on the back here, we're going to place down another red star repeater with the notches spread apart, like so. And with uh, that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have uh, for that section there. And we then want to go ahead and start working on our back here. So back here, we're placed on skeletons come on top of this direct block. We're going to do the same technique with our levers that we've been uh, using. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here uh, with our debug stick. And just like that. And same thing over here. So like that, and then we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of those grindstones. We then want to place down a end rod, which is going to go on top of this wall right here. And on the back here, we're going to do the same thing here with our levers. So to both sides here, have them cl closed down like that, and then a skeleton skull on top of our grindstones. And then lastly, we're going to take some iron trap doors. And we're just going to place down a row of five iron trap doors across those box on the back there for that little kind of catwalk there. Anyways, that right there is going to complete what we have there for layer number uh, 7 for the build. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move into our final layers of the build. Basically put everything on left that we need to do. And uh, basically call it a build from there. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our final layers. We have layers 8 through 14. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and start with our mast here. We're going to place down an end rod on top of this one right here. Followed by a diorite wall that goes up from it. We then want to place down a placeholder block, like so. Coming off the block toward the front of the ship, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. We're going to then place down a placeholder block on top of this skull here. And then going back on the side like that, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like so, and then delete that block. So we have a design that looks like that for our skulls going upwards. We're going to go then place down one, two, and three end rods up. A end rod to both sides of the third end rod, and then just a iron bar on the very tip there to go and finish it off. Once we have that done, do an arm cabling that runs down to the front here. We're going to place down a barrier block here. We're going to go and then drop down from this barrier block with a second one. And we're just going to kind of keep taking this row down like so at an angle. So just like a staircase here using our barrier blocks. And that's going to go ahead and go all the way until we reach this spruce slab. And once we get to the spruce slab, we're going to stop with those. Our next row that we're going to do here is we're going to be going ahead and going off of this barrier block. We're going to place down one back. We then want to go ahead and go up from this barrier block. We're going to go ahead and go one, two back. And then coming off this skeleton skull here, we're going to place down two barrier blocks like so. We then want to go ahead and go to the left side here. And on the sides of each one of these barrier blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down stone buttons. So that's going to be for each of these going up like so. So it should look something like this here for the side for your barrier blocks. And also if we take our barrier blocks away, and just take a look here at the buttons themselves. That's what it should look like there for the cabling there for the front of the ship. Anyways, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and then move to our first funnel. We're going to place a black concrete block on top of this one, followed by a polished diorite block. Then a row of two of polished diorite, and then a row of two of black concrete. Like we did for the front here, we're going to go and do our cabling. We're going to place down three barrier blocks coming off it toward the front mast here. And then two end rods, or sorry, two barrier blocks that go up, coming off that end rod. We then want to go and place down a stone button here to the right or the left side of the barrier blocks. Two stone buttons on top, and then two on the side. So that right there is going to make our cable in there that connects up to our first funnel. With that done, go ahead and go to our second funnel. We're going to place down one, two uh, direct blocks up, and then one, two black concrete blocks up, two polished direct on top, and Actually, my bad, it's going to be like we did before. So it's going to be one polished andesite block up, one black concrete, two polished andesite, two black concrete. So basically the same thing we did for the front one. Move into this section back here. We're going to place down a blue concrete block on top of this one. Diorite block here, two diorite, two black concrete. 
Then for our very last one back here, we're gonna place tiny black concrete on top of this one. Polished andesite, or the polished granite block, or diorite, Jesus said, every other block besides the one I was looking for. Then uh, two diorite blocks and then two black concrete blocks on top. Then for the rear here, we have our mass back here. So we're gonna go to this end rod. We're gonna place down an additional end rod up. We're gonna do the same thing we did for the, the forward mass. So the skeleton skull like that came off the side toward the front. Then the skeleton skull came off the side facing toward the back. And then one, two, and three end rods up. End rod to both sides of the third one. And then an iron bar on the very tip of it like so. We then wanna go ahead and grab our barrier blocks. And we want to go ahead and place down a row of barrier blocks that comes from the third end, or the second end rod right here, so the middle one. It comes down like this at an angle going all the way down to connect up to our funnel. And it's going to go all the way down, and it's going to stop right before we get to that redstone repeater. And we just want to go ahead and then go to the left side here are the barrier blocks, and we're just going to place down stone buttons on the side here, going all the way up, like so. So it looks like that. Once we have that done for the back here, it's going to be slightly different. For this, we're going to go and place down a barrier block coming off this very tip, top end rod. We're going to go ahead and then drop down at an angle with one, drop down again at an angle with one. We're going to go and then drop down at an angle and place down two. Again, down by one, down by one, and one more down like that, going down by one. Now, on the left side's here, we're going to go ahead and start from the bottom up. Uh, stone button, stone button stone button on the sides there are those first four blocks we're going to go and then place down one on top and we're going to then go to the last remaining three place down one on it, the sides there like that and that right there is going to do it for our uh, cables there now for the cables that go across that connect up between the two we want to go and take our barrier blocks and for this we're going to be going ahead and placing down a row of barrier blocks that go from this end rod all the way to the front mast so this is going to go in a straight line try not to place barrier blocks all over the place like I am doing and it's gonna go all the way to the front here and it's gonna connect up to our forward mast like so and we want to make sure that we're not missing any gaps or any that are placed weirdly like that one and we're pretty much good to go so from this we're gonna take our buttons we're gonna start from the back here we're gonna place down one two three four five six seven eight stone buttons going forward we're going to drop down to the side here of the eighth one we're going to place down a stone button on the side and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and twenty one buttons on the side here we're going to go up and then go one two three four five six seven eight going toward the front here and this back here we should actually not have a button on the side of this eighth one so it should look something just like that and that right there is going to be our cable in there for the top. Last thing we have to do is one last line of cable. And then we are pretty much good to go. So for this line here, we're going to start off by going to the top of this end rod. We're going to place down a barrier block. So on top of the end rod like so. We're going to then go up and uh, at an angle back. We're going to then go up and an angle back like that. And then one more on top of it. And then again up and back at an angle like so. And we're going to go and take our stone buttons again on the sides of the blocks like so on the first two. When we get to the third one, we're going to place it down on this side and then on the side of the second one. And then the last one up top there, we're going to place it down on the side as well. So looking at the barrier blocks, it should look like this. And then looking at the buttons, once these disappear, it'll look like this here for that section. And once we have that all done there, that's going to be it for our cabling. And with that, that is going to finish off my design here for the RMS Olympic, Olympic class uh, cruise liner. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put good use. If you do use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be the thing from the side of the build, link to my channel, or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. But with that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.